We're going to throw open to question time. A couple of um, just game rules that I'd like to just put in place. The first is uh, there's roving mic. Um, and you will be given the opportunity, if you put your hand up, someone will come and give you a mic. The second is that um, we'd like you to introduce yourself and say what company you're from. And the third one is we could, if we could keep the question brief, um, not make a statement, and stay on topic of um, housing affordability would be great. So um, let me just open the floor. Is there a question, anyone? And perhaps I start with one to get things going. Um, Mr. Pallas, throughout your uh, presentation today was sprinkled the challenges of working between state and federal governments. What do you think has to happen, basically? There must be a, a game plan that we can just look at it quite plainly and say these are the obvious things that has to happen. Well, thanks, Mary. I think the first thing has to happen is that um, uh, states are not branch offices of the Commonwealth, much as they might uh, want to think that. They're the policy incubators of, of many of the great ideas that uh, fire the efficiency of our nation and, quite frankly, the fact that there's a bit of policy uh, competition between the states, I think, has served this nation very well. The fact that New South Wales and Victoria like to rib each other from time to time, but also like to steal each other's good ideas in these areas are really a demonstration that um, the, there is no substitute for good policy formulation and there's no better way to, pop, to develop good policy than to have an on-the-ground responsibility for delivery. So I think first and foremost recognising that um, uh, we are all in this together to de develop good policy outcomes, that the states have a responsibility in, in this area and that the Commonwealth uh, and the states should effectively identify what each of the tiers of government are expected to do so that they're not pulling in different directions, that we can get a broad level of consensus and complementarity in terms of the way that we go forward. And finally, I would say that uh, the Commonwealth uh, should stop using its uh, national partnership agreements as a way of leveraging um, a broader range of policy control that the Constitution never contemplated that they would have. Uh, the State of Victoria is in a strong financial position. The Commonwealth, not so um, at the moment. But nonetheless, we recognise that we do so much better when we work together and we're talking uh, and we have a common set of values that we're working towards achieving. So the idea of seeing us as competitors or uh, branch offices of the Commonwealth just won't work. Thank you. Any questions? Yes, just at the back there. Mr. Treasurer, uh, would you agree that uh, there is a correlation between um, supply and demand when it comes to housing and land? And uh, you've talked today about um, actually providing assistance to home buyers, and so is the Commonwealth through their super. But um, would you agree that there is a, a necessity to uh, increase supply? Because at the moment in Victoria, if you buy a block of land today, it'll take about 15 months to 18 months to actually get possession of that block. And that is creating a situation where the price of land is increasing dramatically and affordability is going south. So I was just wondering uh, what are the government doing about increasing supply because there is a direct correlation, I think, between supply and demand. Sir, could I just ask you to state your name and your company? John Woodman. <laughs> John Woodman. John Woodman is mine. Thank you. Uh, th thanks, John. Look, um, can I say, uh, as you know, John, you and I have had many discussions about this issue. Uh, to categorically state, yes, I do accept there is um, there are market forces at play, and uh, I wouldn't be much of a treasurer if I disputed the uh, impact um, uh, uh, that supply has upon demand and vice versa. Uh, and can I make the broader point that uh, there will always be arguments about how much more government can do in respect um, 
uh, in respect of uh, uh, the provision of more housing. And of course, more housing ultimately means more affordable housing. But so far as uh, the state is concerned, we've opened up uh, uh, a 17 new suburbs. We've identified precinct structure plans that we expect to be delivered within specified timeframes. We've put in place arrangements with local governments uh, where we expect them to uh, improve and facilitate the early uh, building uh, construction approval of, of land within those precinct structure plans. And we, together with uh, a number of developers, have sought to incentivise that. So uh, in terms of the available land that the state of Victoria and Melbourne in particular has at its disposal, we're doing much better than Sydney, for example. And I suppose to some extent that's a demonstration of why our uh, housing prices and uh, our land costs are about half um, the costs of comparable land in uh, Sydney. Uh, but there's certainly plenty more that we can do. And I know the challenge that I've put out to you and to other developers in this area is, well, tell me what more we can do. Um, because we are open to facilitate uh, a greater uh, delivery of more land into the marketplace. And I accept that some of that is a consequence of state law, state planning law, environmental law. Um, and some of it is as a consequence of the capacity of local councils, particularly on the urban fringe, but some, some as well in the middle suburbs that need assistance from the state to move forward as quickly and effectively as they can uh, to ensure that developers, once they've got precinct structure plan approvals, can get on deliver the housing stock for the community. Thank you. And just in the back of the room, just thank you. Sally Cap, Property Council Treasurer, thank you. And to Cedar, well done. A lot of the recommendations in the paper are either very consistent or add great value to the debate that we're having around housing affordability. Treasurer, sort of building actually on your, a good segue, your answer to my question. Thank you for doing that. Uh, a lot of the policies at a state level also need the coordination across different portfolios. Uh, so can you talk to us about how you're going about coordinating those efforts across ministers and departments and authorities? And just to pick up on your last point, a lot of the recommendations in the paper and that, uh, that we have go to, how can we implement these things consistently across local councils? So you touched on that, just if you had any other thoughts. Sure, Sally, thanks very much for that. Um, well, the first... Uh way that we coordinate across uh, departments is at a ministerial level. I spend a lot of quality time uh, with my ministerial colleagues. Um, the Premier's given me uh, a responsibility for managing uh, the issue of housing affordability. <clears throat> and from our perspective, that's an ongoing process. And I just want to be clear about that. From a government point of view, we don't see housing av affordability as something that you um, sort of tap, pat yourself on the back that you've produced a policy paper and you walk away and say, well, that ought to keep people happy. Um, uh, and quite frankly, it was a very substantial policy intervention. But there's a lot of work that needs to go around uh, landing a lot of those policy ideas. There's a lot of work that needs to go on refining and improving uh, both and monitoring the efficiency of those policy ideas. So uh, I meet with uh, my ministerial colleagues, whether it's the Minister for Planning, um, uh, the Minister for Housing, uh, the Minister for Environment, uh, the Minister for Suburban Development. Uh, they're regular attendees at these forums, but perhaps more importantly, the uh, Department of Treasury and Finance and the Department of Premier and Cabinet are working very closely together in terms of oversighting the implementation of the strategy and what refinement and improvements can be made in an ongoing sense going forward. And um, one thing that I, I, I will say is I'm very keen to catch up with uh, industry players to hear their views about what more we can do. Not because I, I think there'll be some earth-shattering um, uh, uh, moment where the government will produce uh, one single policy that will be the silver bullet, it won't. As I said in my speech, this is an incredibly complex and difficult area of public policy. Um, what makes it uh, sometimes 
infuriating area of public policy is that tiers of government tend to work uh, in, in counterbalance with each other and we need to start to build a general understanding of what are the things that we're seeking to do here. So from this government you won't have an argument about whether uh, supply has an impact upon demand. Clearly it does and we need to do more on the supply side. But also from this government we recognise that there's plenty more that the government can do in terms of uh, red tape reduction, in terms of uh, good policy development that will facilitate uh, secure investments for those who are looking to do uh, more in this policy space. Um, with regard to the, the issue of local governments and whether or not we can uh, all uh, uh, act in a positive and constructive way, can I say some of the most valuable interventions in the development of the Homes for Victorian policy was by some uh, some of the outer suburban councils. Uh, some of them were very keen to uh, be incentivised to improve their, uh, their project approval process. Uh, they were very keen to receive funding and I think in many cases one Wyndham um, developers have been making those contributions uh, because it works in everybody's interests that we get approval through as quickly, efficiently and transparently as possible and that we resource those tiers of government at the coalface as efficiently as we can. That's great, thank you. And we'll take the last question just on, up on the right. Thank you, Treasurer. Danny Addison from the Urban Development Institute. Thanks for getting the industry associations well and truly out of the way before lunch. Um, and congratulations again to CEDA on, on the report. Thank you very much for that significant piece of work. Um, Treasurer, you mentioned um, three magical words, red tape reduction, um, in your answer just then. And I understand that the Red Tape Commissioner delivered a report to you uh, on the planning and development approval system um, earlier this year, perhaps six or so months ago. Um, we're yet to see that report or a response from the government, but I do anticipate that it would have some very helpful tips. Is there a timeline for that uh, report's release or are these issues being considered actively by the policymakers um, who are advising you and by the Premier uh, and Cabinet Department and Department of Treasury when they're looking at what uh, these implementable solutions could be? Uh, yeah, well, I, I don't know about the report itself and when it becomes public, but I can assure you that um, Matthew Butlin and the work that he does as Red Tape Commissioner uh, has been a profound value to the state in terms of uh, how we look at red tape reduction um, and certainly uh, it's influenced the development of our Homes for Victoria policy. I picked the eyes out of the, uh, of the report in terms of policy ideas that he thought could, could assist. Um, I don't have any difficulty with the report ultimately being made public, can I say. Um, uh, I also have the view that I think um, uh, some of the more novel interventions in this area have been advocated for by the planning minister, such as uh, exploring and uh, progressively delivering, as of right, approvals for construction. Um, uh, and I think that in many ways the idea that the state uh, should play a complementary role with, with business, finding the areas where we can just cut out the, uh, the unnecessary process, um, I think that will be generally welcomed. It'll take the cost out of construction. It'll take the timeline and time lag out of construction. It'll reduce the cost to uh, councils, particularly out of suburban councils who are feeling the pressure in terms of their capacity to deal with the demand of construction approval. So um, yes, uh, red tape reduction is a critical part of this. Uh, we made that clear in our homes for Victorian for Victorians' policy, and yes, we will continue to look at what more we can do, and we'd be really pleased to receive any suggestions that you have, and certainly, so far as the Red Tape Commissioner is concerned, uh, we've been working progressively with him to implement uh, those of his recommendations that we think will materially assist industry. Thank you very much. That's all we've got time for in terms of questions. Um, Mr. Pallas, thank you for being so open and interesting for us this afternoon. I'm sure there will be lots more thought-provoking um, information and questions after the panel this afternoon. Um, in the meantime, would you join me in thanking the Treasurer of Victoria, the Honourable Tim Pallas.
Hey.